My friends, PC prices, oh, <laughs> they're gonna get so much worse. Also, Samsung gets worse somehow by being buttholes. And EVGA teases the best AMD motherboard ever invented. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. I had a few people comment yesterday that they were, you know, eating Chinese food at 5 p.m. or they were having a Guinness. It doesn't matter, all right? You're either having second breakfast, third breakfast, even breakfast, midnight breakfast, I don't care. When you watch hot news, it's breakfast time. You got that? Good. <laughs> and that little bit of excitement needs to temper itself because we're gonna talk about the probably worst story that you wanna hear today, and that is TSMC, which is a company who's responsible for making a lot of the CPUs and GPUs and, you know, consoles that are out there. They're raising their prices by a 10 to 20%. So that's, that's gonna be coming down the pipeline for parts pricing that's happening all across the board. TSMC responsible for a whole bunch of stuff, not currently responsible for Nvidia's GPUs. Samsung's actually taking care of that, but that doesn't mean that it couldn't potentially switch over to that if Nvidia decides to go with them for the 30 Super Series. So according to the report, TSMC is looking to increase their pricing on seven nanometer and five nanometer wafers by as much as 10%. And then their 16 nanometer and 12 nanometer wafers are gonna increase by 20% starting in December. So that's actually a little bit ways away, but it does mean that if there's any price decreases that are happening in the market right now, they're just gonna shoot back up once orders start getting placed for that, or companies in anticipation of that price increase of TSMC are gonna start raising their prices now in order to prepare for that coming down the pipeline. I'm not exactly privy to how everybody's accounting works, but I could see some companies doing one way or some companies doing the other way. This is also also coming after the report that TSMC canceled some of its discounts that it had for its major customers because prices were just getting out of whack for them. And the reasons are multifactored. Number one, according to this report, TSMC's gross margins have fallen under the industry standard of 50%. Gross margins means how much they're making on it, which I know 50% might seem like a lot of profit, but they also are the first stage in the pipeline. Actually, they're not even the first stage, like them getting the silicone and then trades like there. It's multifactored, right? They have to then send it off to these companies companies who then turn it into something, who then turn it into something, to the retailers who then make two to 3% on the product at the end stage of things. Also adding that TSMC has started several large and costly expansion initiatives, large new factories abroad, advanced facilities in Taiwan, as well as things like getting a water treatment plant up and running because they can't necessarily provide for all of these chips if Taiwan happens to overrun out of water and they have to service investor return. Demand is up and shortages are intensifying, raw materials prices have increased, freight rates have increased, and other inflationary and geopolitical political pressures are at play. Computer pricing, likely not gonna settle down anytime soon. We've had reports from people like AMD CEO Lisa Su and NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wong saying things like, we don't expect supply constraints to loosen until the end of 2022. This is something else entirely. So if you had supply constraints on a market that's going to raise the prices and then if the back end parts of those prices get raised, maybe that actually might help to uh, uh, alleviate some of the demand because if things get too expensive, less people wanna buy them. Do you want an RTX 30? 60 for $750? No, you don't, which is why you haven't bought them. But what if that's just the price? What if inflation and everything else being raised makes that the price forever? Are you gonna be buying one? No, I didn't think so. You're gonna have to wait until like the RTX 6000 series before you get an RTX 30 equivalent down for like 300 bucks. It's a sad world we live in. What do you think of prices going up? Oh, I'm sorry to have to report that news to you. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm gonna let you know what I think about today's video sponsor of hot news. We got The Ridge, my friends. You should check out The Ridge at the link in the video description. When you go to themridge.com forward slash hot news and use code hot news at checkout, you'll get 10% off your order on a great slim, sleek, minimalist wallet that can replace your giant behemoth of a leather wallet that you've been carrying around that got hand me down from your grandpappy's grandpappy. I know it has some sentimental family legacy, but it's too big, okay? Stop slapping that in your back pocket. Maybe slap a ridge wall in your back pocket and hold up 12 cards. It has room for cash. There's over 30 different colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium, and they have over 40,000 five-star reviews. And the durable material means that each one comes with a lifetime warranty. And the Ridge team's so confident that you'll like it. They'll let you test drive it for 45 days. And if you don't love it, you can send it 
it back to them, okay? This is 2021's wallet, okay? It was also 2020's wallet. I mean, this, this, it's the decade, millennia, century of slimming down. You should absolutely do that with a Ridge wallet. Go to ridge.com forward slash hot news, enter code hot news to save 10%. And big thanks to the Ridge again for sponsoring today's episode. Now let's get into a little bit of gaming news because Gamescom is currently happening, which in case you don't remember, Gamescom is where we actually got the unveiling of the RTX 20 series when that did get unveiled August of what was it, 2018? Are we that far removed? Oh my goodness. Anyways, Microsoft showing off a $550, so only a 10% price bump, Halo themed Xbox Series X. I kind of dig it. I can't, like for only a $50 increase, I like this. Microsoft doing some good custom work here. Also being announced that Halo Infinite is coming out on December 8th, and in case you haven't heard the news, it's going to be launching without co-op and Forge modes, which got fans in an uproar because not having co-op in Halo is like having soup with no bowl. What the heck's even the point? I wanna hear what you think of Halo with no co-op down below in the comments. The Horizon Forbidden West is a game that I'm excited for that was supposed to come out this year. They got delayed. Now it has a new release date, February 18th of 2022. Looking forward to that. And also coming out as an update for Horizon Zero Dawn on the PS5. You can now get it to run at up to 60 FPS on the PS5, which is great, except for I've been playing it on PC, which I've been able to get hundreds of FPS. So <laughs> PS5, even though like I got, I kitted out my PS5 with dark plates and a D-brand skin, it looks immaculate. Oh yeah, D-brand dark plates. And Amazon saying <laughs> to all your GPUs because they're getting an open beta for the new world MMO on September 9th. So in case you want to fry another RTX 3090, here's another chance until the game gets fully released on September 20th. Eighth. And when does Bitcoin get it get fully released? I don't know, but it's time for the crypto stunts update, which I know crypto people are probably gonna be like arguing down in the comments. I don't know what it means for Bitcoin to be fully released. I'll just Bitcoin up 1.53% in the last 24 hours, up to 48.853. Ethereum up roughly 1% to be at 32.18. Dogecoin down half a percent to be at 29 cents. Dogecoin not barking too much anymore. Meme stonks peeling back a little bit of the layers after its excitement yesterday. In case you missed it, GameStop went up over 20%. It pulled back by about 5% right now to close at 199.65, went up to 201 in after hours trading. AMC not pulling back quite as much, down 0.68%, lowering on the day to 43.96, which actually isn't too shabby after the 20% increase that it had yesterday. But as we continue talking about memes, Elon Musk in the full self-driving beta is saying that the public button that's supposed to come out to people who have already paid the company for full self-driving beta years ago, thousands of dollars um, should be coming out in roughly four weeks, which is again, what we've been hearing ever since March, April, was it? Uh, so we're, we're, we're a bit beyond that at this point, but V10 for the beta is supposed to come out. It's supposed to have a completely retrained neural net, which has the highway and the city stacks put together. And then it's gonna be tuning and bug fixes. And then you're gonna get the button to click it and say, hey, yeah, I wanna try out the full self-driving beta, autonomously drive me around this entire freaking planet. If it does come out in four weeks, that's gonna be just in time for my charity stream. So I better believe it's not happening. There's zero chance this is coming out this year, all right? My best guess, all right? Just based on how I know Elon time works from all of my watching him on the Twitters, all right? This is how it's gonna work. Full self-driving beta is gonna roll out to like another 5,000 people on December 31st. It's gonna be like a New Year's present, all right? Just so that they could say that they did it this year, all right? It came out in 2021, big whoop. Ah, and while I facetiously am like kind of bummed about full self-driving not coming out, I'm actually kind of really frustrated about Samsung. When you unlock the bootloader on the Z Fold 3 or Z Flip 3, they won't let you use the cameras anymore, which is absolutely ridiculous in my opinion. They're saying it's for security reasons of whatever merit that means. So when you unlock it, it says you'll lose access to your cameras. This isn't the first thing that they've removed access to. Stuff like their knock security, which then removes things like Samsung Pay and secure folder, that kind of makes Makes sense. They don't want to give up some of the security stuff to things that have unlocked bootloaders, but to remove the cameras, really Samsung? That just seems anti-consumer and nonsense. This is the second day in a row we've had a story about Samsung doing something to consumers that people didn't think that they should do. What do you think of Samsung removing the cameras from you if you unlock your bootloader? Are you for it? Are you against it? Or are you of the opinion that if somebody's buying a Z Flip or Z Fold 3, they're likely not the type of person to unlock the bootloader in the first place? So who freaking cares, huh? 
Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. And I already know your thoughts because I used a quantum computer to quantum compute your brain in another simulation. That's how quantum computing works. I'm not a scientist. Don't ask me any more questions. But now researchers have found a way to get quantum computers to work on a way that's not silicon and instead is actually using glass because they've been able to precisely fuse silica glass together to make it so that it uses ions to get the quantum qubits to work and they could potentially scale it up to triple digit qubits, which is how you measure quantum computing processing stuff. Anyways, the benefits of glass allows it so that you have an ion trap computer that gets manipulated with lasers. And then because it's glass, the physical shape of it can be manipulated to allow the lasers to come through and address the device in a specific way. Man, I barely understand how computers work. I less understand how quantum computers work. Glass powered quantum computers sci-fi is here friends speaking of things i don't understand algorithms what are they i post a video on tiktok it gets nearly a million views in a week i post the same exact dang video on youtube shorts and it gets like seven thousand views what's up with the algorithms am i right <laughs> what's the deal with algorithms <laughs> That's a terrible Jerry Seinfeld impression. Anyways, it appears that TikTok is now going to be testing an even longer form video in case you're not familiar with it. TikTok was at one point only allowing up to one minute videos. Now it allows up to three minute videos. And now they are currently testing up to five minute videos to select creators who might be able to use this, which for me just like completely defeats the whole point of the app. Like when I'm scrolling through, it really does need to be in that 10 to 30 second, like quick, I need to flip on to the next one, feeding that like incessant, need to have content all of the time. Daddy's got some content for you. Let me shove it down your throat. That's what TikTok's good at. When I watch a video that's like a minute, I'm like, this got a little long in the tooth, but if the you know, characters entertaining enough, I'll stay there. If it's over a minute, if it's like one to three minutes, at some point my brain goes, why haven't you scrolled yet? You need to move on from this. And going to five minutes just seems like that's not the point of the app and they're moving away from what it was trying to create like a YouTube competitor because everybody's trying to get in on the shorts thing. So they're stealing away market share. So TikTok's trying to reinvent themselves. I don't necessarily agree with this, but again, I'm not a multi-billion dollar corporation. I'm just a bald dude sitting in a basement. And in yesterday's episode of Hot News, this bald dude sitting in a basement told you about how Razor's peripherals could potentially elevate administrator privileges in case you plug them in because Synapse software had to get installed. Turns out that's not the only peripheral company that does that bad thing. Uh, SteelSeries also using a very similar exploit where their software will install on Windows and can give you administrator level privileges without you actually needing a password or actually to have administrator privileges in the first place. Stop it! SteelSeries, Razor, get your crap together. Don't do this. Obviously, this doesn't work on PCs that already have SteelSeries and Razor software installed. So maybe the end game is that they want you to install their software on your PC before you even buy their products. All right, that's how you prevent this from happening. Good play. I respect the hustle. EVGA also respect in overclockers by unveiling the X570 Dark motherboard, which is being quoted as the monster AMD overclocking motherboard, probably one of the best X570 motherboards you could buy. That is a beauty, look at that. Mm, such a good looking board. It's gonna be able to overclock like nobody's business. We don't know a whole lot about it just yet. This is the first picture coming up. EVGA and their dark series motherboards, obviously for extreme overclocking. I wanna see what people are gonna be able to push this to just a little bit people might be able to push Intel CPUs a little bit further, 12700K getting benchmarked, showing that in a Geekbench, it's just shy of a Ryzen 7 5800X, which admittedly isn't a very good thing since it has eight performance cores, four efficiency cores, whereas the Ryzen 7 has only eight performance cores. So the Intel has more cores and performs worse. Whereas on comparing it to a Ryzen 9 makes a little bit more sense because then it's 16 versus you know, 12 cores. Anyways, it looks like it's gonna be slightly catching up to AMD. Whether or not AMD releases another CPU this year that might have like 3D V cache technology that makes it so that they're even better at gaming, we'll have to wait and see, but Intel Benchmark's coming out. And I'm going out because it's the end of this episode of Hot News. Why don't you check out yesterday's episode where we talked about how Nvidia is bringing a special brand of GPU back from the grave. And I'll see you tomorrow for another episode at breakfast, my friends, okay? I don't care what you're drinking. I don't care what you're eating at breakfast, all right? I don't like, you want pizza for breakfast? That's fine, just eat it cold.